First, I welcome Professor Vallam Sundar. Welcome you, sir, on behalf of the organizing committee, as well as uh, the chair of this uh, section, <coughs> to this technical session. So before I hand over the <coughs> chair session to Professor, I would like to introduce to the participant. Professor Vallam Sundar obtained his bachelor's degree in civil engineering from College of Engineering Gindi in Chennai in 1975 obtained his M.Tech and Ph.D. and joined IIT Madras as a faculty in 1981. He retired in June 2018, having served as a professor in the Department of Ocean Engineering since 1996. So post-retirement, he rejoined as a professor emeritus at IIT Madras. So professor Sundar has supervised 27 Ph.D.s, 14 M.S., 12 M.Tech theses, and he has about nearly 550 publications to his credit in various conferences and journals. And perhaps these publications are the highest by an Indian in the field of ocean engineering. So we are really proud of you, sir. A few of his publication has won the best paper award in the international conferences. And more so, he has participated in hundreds of conferences worldwide and chaired many, many technical sessions. So he, has, he is the member of the editorial board of 10 international journals and has reviewed number of technical papers submitted to peer review the uh, journals. He has been rated as an excellent teacher at IIT Madras. He has published three books and also <clears throat> a courses that is available in the YouTube, which has become very, very handy for students for the distance learning. He has number of awards to his credit as well, notably the National Design Award in Environmental Engineering 2008 from Institution of Engineers India for his notable contribution of solution to four decades old problem of coastal erosion along Rai Puram. So recognizing his contribution in the field of coastal engineering, the International Association of Hydro Environmental Engineering and Research elected him as the chair of the Asia Pacific Division in 2006. And he has long term collaborations with several uh, overseas universities in Europe particularly in Germany and Norway. So he's uh, serving as a member of expert member, um, committee for the Coastal Protection and Development Advisory Government of India for three terms, each of three years since 2010. <clears throat> His reports on the master plan for the two maritime states, Tamil Nadu and Kerala, in connection with tsunami mitigation measures remain as a basic document for planning and implementations. He has recently helped the National Green Tribunal on an important decision on settling a dispute on coastal protection. Welcome you, sir, Professor Vallam Sundaram. And he will be delivering uh, his technical talk on sustainable, hard, and soft measures for coastal protection. I'm sure with his vast of decades of vast experience, he will mesmerize us in this post-lunch technical session. Over to you, Professor, for the commencement of the presentation. Thank you, Professor Patasarvi, for introducing me at the outset. I would like to place uh, on record my sincere thanks uh, to the organizing committee for having be given me an opportunity to share my experiences. So my topic will be on sustainable, hard, and soft measures for coastal air protection. Of late, this uh, soft measures have uh, become so popular, at least uh, talk of the day. And uh, let me try to give some examples for both hard and soft measures. Then I'll just uh, uh, present to you the performance characteristics of each of these. And then I'll try to finally wind up with uh, the uh, merits and demerits of hard and soft measures. And most of my lectures, uh, my, my, this uh, lecture doesn't have a single equation. So you can uh, relax and uh, be peaceful and happy because you don't have any mathematical equation. And it will be something like uh, my experiences uh, uh, so far. Coastal hazards, as you can see in this uh, slide, floods, storms, and earthquakes. But we are more interested in this storms and uh, uh, floods. So here you see that 
what you see on the subscript is against each country showing its global rank so this rank i think we are not happy with this rank uh, this you leave it because this more of nature but this also it is of nature we can certainly do something about it so this calls for a better understanding or also prepare well for any kind of a mitigation measure in the case of coastal hazards this coastal hazards except the tsunami all other coastal hazards are more or less giving us enough warnings for us to get prepared now added to this dimension is the rising sea level the mean sea level rise on a global scale has been increasing by about 1.8 mm per year now this out of a PG, uh, recent study you see that it is almost about 1 mm this from nao so you can say that the mm, sea level rise is to an extent of about 1 to 2 mm i mean 0.12 0.2 uh, mm uh, per year M meter per year so now next uh, we will move on to the causes for erosion now this is a, a video which clearly shows what kind of environment we are living with india has such a long coastline and uh, most of the parts of the coastline has a, a lot of problems and there is one such problem so this is a, a nature this is due to nature and we need to safeguard our environment so the natural factors are action of waves on the coast storms sudden outbursts construction of dams because if you have a, a lot of sediments along the shore then these can serve as buffers and reduce the inundation level as well as the height the wave height but uh, if you start constructing dams then this also would lead to some instability in the shoreline that doesn't mean that you are not supposed to construct any dams it needs careful planning then added to this uh, already existing problem we are talking about the sea level rise there are artificial factors human activities along the coast construction of uh, harbors or any other kind of uh, development activities that will intercept uh, the passage of uh, sediments along the coast the moment you allow things to take its own shape then there is no problem but if you try to meddle with it sometimes you burn your fingers a combination of these two factors are the one which is which has recently acted in mahabalipuram which i am not going to discuss here because of want of time so look at these two animations which are self explanatory for example flat beach like that in goa are excellent for relaxing and that is why goa beaches are very popular and steep beaches are not popular and we don't go to a location where Uh, the beach is steep particularly for holidays but then look at these two you may, i mean animations so here quite dangerous in case of a uh, uh, maybe uh, a tsunami because it will simply travel and uh, the travel distance may be much 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 many times higher than in this case of a beach now let me touch upon some of the basic physics see when you go to a beach and stand uh, and stand here, here look at the ocean you will see most of the time it will you will get a feeling as if they are hitting you directly it is coming normal to you but when you drop a ball you see how the ball is moving ball will be moving along the shore so either it will be moving this way or this way and this depends on the seasons southwest monsoon and northeast monsoon so in this way if the waves are coming in this direction probably during southwest monsoon then there is a flow taking place which is called as long shore currents and these are induced by the ocean waves okay if this inclination is uh, longer i mean more the obliqueness is more then the current will be more and this uh, current is going to remove the particles all along the beach and it will be transporting along the coast and that means there is a continuous movement of sand along the shore and for your information the east coast of india has the world's longest i mean a highest uh, uh, transport rate so when that is a situation when you add 
some kind of uh, structures for different reasons. Maybe this is for coastal protection, which I will come back later, or this is for uh, making sure that uh, the connection between the river and uh, the ocean is not uh, uh, blocked, then you construct a pair of training walls. Uh, either in this case, or there is another uh, uh, case where you have offshore detached breakwater, we'll see later. So you see what is happening is the movement of sand is arrested. And then you have a beach. This is a positive aspect, but then there is some erosion taking place on the other side. So this needs to be carefully done. And uh, when you want to do that, when you want to erect this kind of structures for the coastal protection, you, what is in hand right of right uh, right now? Most of uh, structures are hard measures. They are constructed with uh, natural rocks or concrete blocks. Now, of late, people are talking about geosynthetic products, which are termed as uh, 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 a set of uh, I mean subset of uh, your soft measures. So, having uh, introduced the the basic subject, then uh, I will uh, get into I mean at least uh, I have. We emphasize or highlighted the uh, how the erosion is taking place. Now, there can be another form of erosion that is particularly when this is when uh, on a regular basis. But when there is a storm, what happens is the storm breaks, and uh, you you have seen the earlier slide where it can have overtopping, and that will when the return flow is taking place, the sand is removed from the beach, and that is how the erosion takes place when there is a storm. Now, when to counteract all these problems, what are the options we have? One is called as hard engineering options. Here, essentially, gravity structures made of rubble stones or concrete is used. And this is an age-old practice which is still continuing. Then immediate results of erosion problems can be sought out because the moment you think of this, it is quite, uh, it's not so difficult to get the solution, you will get an immediate solution. But carefully it needs to be done. If you put in a location where it is not supposed to be put, then you are likely to have adverse effects. So that is very important. And uh, when you look at uh, coastal protection works, so you see that hard engineering structures. So this is a, a beach where which, which, this is a coast which was continuously eroding and they have uh, these groins. This is called as groin field. So this will, what will happen is when the sand is moving, the first one will stop and then you will see the beach and the next one will stop, you'll we'll see. So alternate pockets will have some beach field ultimately, maybe after a few years, maybe about that five to 10 years, you will see that you will be able to win back the lost beach. That is the advantage of this grind field or this grind field can be straight or at a certain locations you might have to have going for what is called as a T grinds or if you don't have this kind of uh, support, then you will have just offshore detached waters which can also do the same for the same purpose as that. The other aspect is the seawall, which is very, very common. And you, you would have seen, number of most of you would have seen these seawalls. The seawalls earlier, there was not, to be very honest with you, there are not much of, a, uh, I mean, technical uh, uh, scientific, uh, uh, scientific calculations to arrive at the slope or weight of the stone. This, they used to some, simply, I am talking about early, uh, 60s or maybe late 50s, they used to dump. But later you had formulas and then started refining the cross section so that it can survive uh, at least the perennial uh, wave action or even the uh, storm, uh, occasional storms. So this is the training walls which uh, uh, serve as a connecting which can Permit, uh, permit the and the fresh water, and in several locations it is needed because there are some brackish water uh, lakes. Uh, for example, Chilika, which is a brackish water lake. If you don't have the continuous exchange of uh, fresh water and sea water, brackish can become a fresh water lake, and you have other uh, consequences on one thing. And then, for example, Pondicherry Harbor, you have a training wall so that uh, uh, vessels can and then move inside. So these are all, see, all these structures which I am showing you, 
these are all hard structures that is we use uh, boulders and that's why it is called but when you look at the basic physics the basic physics is it is stopping the movement of sand and arresting it uh, from clogging in and then it is promoting the free exchange of water so what it means is the structure is same only the material if you can change and if can if it can survive survive the environmental conditions then you can use any kind of material instead of the hard measures like your concrete or natural rocks that then here you see that if you, if you have a structure like this these are all called reefs these artificial reefs are submerged so that the energy can be dissipated even before it reaches the uh, coast so this is one kind of another kind of uh, uh technology or uh, scientific idea which we have and we have implemented what i'll try to sh share with you is some of our experiences along the, our indian coast so to start with uh, uh, this was one of the uh, important project which i don't uh, uh, forget to present in any forum because uh, this also got me the award and this was a, a problem that was persisting for nearly four decades or five decades in fact five decades so you have the uh, you have the madras chennai harbor with a, a breakwater here and uh, initially what happened when there was only one small uh, uh, structure jetting in then you we had uh, the marina beach formed when the sand is moving and the moment you have a, a kind of an obstruction it stops the sand freely moving so what happens is it starts settling here and then you have the beaches formed so this is a positive aspect we have the marina beach which is second longest beach in the world mm -hmm. and uh, but then there is another negative negative this this uh, extends uh, to blocking the river and this river is connected all over the chennai city which still stings even today and that is one of the reason why we have a lot of mosquitoes also now coming back to the erosion this area was completely getting eroded for on a continuous basis and we lost nearly about 400 meters width of the beach and for a over a, a length of about 6 kilometers so this is a, a, a loss which uh, we need to take care and also then we had another port some coming here which is called as the enur port now now it is named as kamaraj port now the distance between this and this is something like uh, 20 kilometers but then you have you need some kind of a kind of connectivity between these two ports along the road and if the road itself is getting eroded then what is that the first choice is to make sure that this road is repaired and that is how we try to look at the grinds as a uh, first time we wanted to put the grinds and we had a lot of hurdles we whenever we want to try something new certainly you all of you know that you might have to face a lot of hurdles uh because not because they want to question you but they want to be uh careful so now you see that a uh, road which is connecting this area was completely eroded and you can see the, what is the status of this coast what they did is they used uh, different kinds of solutions for this and uh, without knowing how you can tame the waves and the sediments we need to tame the waves that just uh, go, you cannot be greedy in uh, uh, uh coastal protection so if you want to adopt you have to think and plan and then we gave this solution and what we gave is this is the harbor chennai harbor and this is the enur harbor satellite harbor so initially we had a four grinds here and then six grinds here and then we said this is the most uh, uh, affected area that was because you see that this area you don't have much of problem with the road so only this area was uh, really very badly affected so we gave this solution and immediately it was uh, uh, implemented and also not just uh, uh, giving the, the solution through physical modeling as well as numerical modeling which i am not going to go into the details then after this then we also were involved in the uh, site supervision as well as also advising on the construction uh, procedures then this was uh, done and then now you see this is the area what uh, to see is to believe now you see that the an area where you would not be able to see uh, the sand at all now you see this is the status and this uh, sand is still intact there is no problem except that 
when we started monitoring uh, this area, this stretch of the coast, <coughs> you see that uh, uh, you follow the dates here, and you see that this is the area of sand that was accumulated. And you just note here, see, in this uh, 2004 September, we had something like 8,000, which was uh, uh, about 50% of this vanished in uh, January. So you know the reason. You must be knowing the reason because of uh, the tsunami of 2004. So during the tsunami 2004, you had uh, the removal of the beach sand from the shore and then it was taken inside. But then that uh, sandbar which was formed there again got uh, redeposited. And this is what is called as you have to sometimes wait and observe and then take a decision. You should not immediately jump into the conclusions. So we were very happy and the status quo, status quo is maintained. The beach is intact and we don't have any problem. Now, after having uh, exposed you to the groin field, I am not going to, I think I have uh, something on seawall because this, this is not very serious. Only thing is uh, you have to talk about uh, the slopes, which I'll come back to that later. But then the other important uh, structure or concept is uh, having breakwaters. These are just uh, trapezoidal sections put in layers. The lowest, uh, low, lowest layer will be of smaller stones. And then as it comes outside to the surface, it will become la uh, bigger and bigger. The largest stone will be on the, as will serve as the armor layer or the surface layer or the primary layer to take care of the wave forces acting on it. The design of structure, such structures are no, no problem at all. It is quite straightforward. You can design. Only thing is implementation or planning of uh, the spacing and the, uh, uh, and the uh, lengths of these breakwaters and also looking at the status based on the status of the shoreline and uh, also the past histories, etc. That is where you need a lot of scientific uh, input. And that is what we are uh, in a position to do. So the one, the top one is somewhere in uh, uh, Spain and the bottom one is somewhere in uh, uh, da Denmark where they have protected this coast. But then in our coast, uh, this uh, kind of a concept was not has not been tried yet, not much. There, there were some pilot uh, projects which uh, uh, through which we have uh, burnt our fingers. And in fact, we they have not used the rubble mound or the hard measures for this. They had used uh, the geotubes. I'll come back to that later. So now the idea was, now when we looked at this, the cost uh, implication comes into picture. We This is a, a very effective uh, uh, solution for the coastal protection. But then... Uh, we have some kind of another phenomena that can be beneficial to the society, then probably we can think of the uh, detached the offshore breakwaters as one of the possible solutions. So in this way, we try to uh, look at this uh, concept. And then what we try to think is to how can we uh, include or combine the rice. That is, now people are talking about uh, um, alternate sources of energy and among which the ocean energy is one of the important concepts and among which wave energy is also very promising. And the, so it is nothing. See, when the wave is entering, you have a, 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 a chute through which the wave is oscillating and this air is going to be oscillating and that is going to pump our move the turbine, as you can see. So how can we include this uh, in a rubble mound offshore breakwater? Now you see that this is a breakwater, this is another breakwater, this is a portion of another breakwater. So we had a, a number of uh, uh, oscillating water column devices here to understand the basic physics, how it performs. performs. So now you see that there the gap between the oscillating water column devices were varied and then we found out that this is quite promising. And for, for your information, this is the first time it has been done around the globe and this paper has been uh, acknowledged uh, worldwide. And then we have uh, come up with some uh, concrete conclusions with this. And now the only problem is we do have some problems with handling this uh, rubble mode. So instead of this, we are looking at how we can have a 
precast kind of a structure with the uh, built-in uh, oscillating water column device. Such a kind of a device is a structure for coastal protection as well as energy conversion can be very useful for particularly for island. In the uh, offing, probably we'll come up uh, with, uh, hope we are going to be successful. And uh, now next uh, you have the uh, artificial reefs, which I have said. Florida is one of the places where they have uh, used the reef balls uh, and uh, to a great extent because what happens is it dissipates the energy even before it reaches the coast. And there are some uh, uh, kind of guidelines how to plan for this. And for example, this is somewhere in Puerto Rico where they have constructed here and in order to save this age old uh, fort. So with this, uh, well, with this kind of an idea, what we thought is so for our country, there is one artificial island here, which is called, uh, sorry, uh, the, the, uh, an island which is called as uh, one island. This island, quite long island, was uh, slowly getting eroded. And in fact, a part of the uh, portion of the uh, island got completely vanished. So what we wanted is, we didn't want to, it is rich in flora and fauna. So we cannot afford to bring in stones there. So the other option was, to go in for some kind of uh, artificial reefs. So now we have fabricated this kind of artificial reefs prior to going into the ocean. We try to verify this through numerical modeling as well as uh, physical, not physical modeling, uh, physical modeling only two dimensional tests in the flume. And then we suggested that this kind of uh, uh, an array of uh, uh, artificial reefs, as you can see here, is uh, placed as shown here uh, alternatively so that the wave energy can be absorbed and uh, and it's all submerged so because of which you have a, a lot of uh, marine life you can see here and the uh, the i am happy to say that the island has come back to its uh, almost uh, original shape this was about four years back four or five years back we did this work and then we wanted to extend this work as uh, a kind of uh, a device which is uh, like this, and uh, we are able to. This is just a, a concept, is a part of a PhD work. Now, uh, having introduced the old problem, and it is still stable. Uh, the sea walls have been uh, redesigned. Somehow I forgot to explain that, but uh, it was re redesigned because the slope was uh, instead of one is to two, we just have a, a flatter slope in order to reduce the weight. Or if you have a steeper slope, you have to have a, a heavier boulder. All these things are there because I don't want to discuss in detail. And then uh, you have about, uh, we have recently done about. Uh, 30 stretches of the coast, Kerala coast, uh, along uh, the along the Kerala coast for about, uh, the, uh, I don't know, maybe about uh, 45 to 50 kilometers. And there are still ongoing, about four projects ongoing uh, with uh, something connected with this and other kind of concepts and uh, towards the future. So if you want to uh, check the Google Earth, go along the Kerala coast and you will see it for yourself. Now, towards the future coast, depletion of natural rock, particularly. In fact, Kerala is not allowing now. They are banning, banning the natural rock. And for islands, it's going to be quite uh, difficult to transport to there. So then in that case, you are driven to kind of uh, uh, art, art, I mean, uh, artificial uh, armor blocks, like concrete blocks, not the natural rocks. And uh, it is also the problem with this is the destruction of highways. You have the hard measures, you have the positive aspects, but then you have other problems like that lead distance may be more, but still, since you don't have any other concept, then you are only driven to natural rock, then you don't mind spending a lot of money on the lead distance. So, hence, and also the concrete uh, blocks, you have some of these blocks on which we had to be paying a royalty earlier to France particularly. Now we have our own blocks, which we have recently done for Krishna Patnam port and it is intact and it is very good also. And now then uh, we have the multi-purpose uh, breakwater or reefs, which I have discussed. Multi-purpose breakwater is uh, the offshore, offshore detached breakwater with wave energy converter. So very, very important also, it's also very important for us to look into the cheaper methods of coastal protection. 
Now let's look into the software, the soft engineering options. One is the beach nourishment, take it from one location to do and drop it in another location. Dune stabilization, this is very good on paper, but very difficult to maintain it in the field. And same case here, it is looking very nice, but maintaining is a problem. Coastal vegetation, this also is a problem. But we always talk about greenery. Okay, greenery, how difficult, how, how easy it is to manage in this kind of an environment, that is one important aspect we should have in mind. Geosynthetic too, oh, yes, this is eco-friendly, it's very nice, environmentally friendly, so, but then there are some uh, ways and means of doing it. And uh, we did try this and what was the consequence we try, I'll try to share it. For example, narrow neck, which is in Gold Coast. This is one thing you, I request you to just, if you are interested, you can just put a narrow neck, Gold Coast. You will uh, know about uh, the details of this project, how they have used uh, geo, uh, synthetic products to win back the lost beach. Now, involvement in IIT, uh, involvement uh, of IITM in soft measures. So you should not think that IIT Madras is looking only at hard measures. No, that is uh, that has to be removed from your mind. So we have done something on uh, beach nourishment of Puducherry. I'll tell you that this we have done in uh, Orissa, Gopalpur. Uh, again, we had a lot of issues with this. Maintaining the dune is not so easy. Now, recently, we have also completed one uh, vegeta uh, I mean, one PhD work, and we have given uh, design principles for having the plantation to be made all along the coast, which was really vulnerable uh, tsunami ingress. So, but then this all takes a lot of time. You don't. Uh, you you might have to wait for years now. So, coming to geosynthetic products. So here is the geosynthetic products where we have tried something for uh, in uh, Upara, that is of uh, north of Visakhapatnam. Uh, so where you see that we have prepared a, a layer which is which is called as a geotextile, and over which we have a, a geotube. There is a special way of filling the sand with uh, inside the geotube. What geotube uh, does is it retains the sand and allows the water to penetrate out. And then over this, we have placed geo bags, that is just sand bags. Over that, we have put what is called as gabions. So this combination of geosynthetic products gave us some kind of degree of confidence because it has served for several years now. I think probably uh, five to six years it has served and it has withstood a number of storms also. And this is one such a uh, uh, scenario taken, uh, which is shown here. Now, the geotube, coming to geotube, suppose in, in when you want to put the geotube as offshore breakwaters or an artificial uh, beach, so you see that this is ineffective. Because if you don't do it perfectly, then you are in for trouble, the whole thing is going. Not only this, uh, Tube will go, it will also take away with, uh, with it all the sand which has accumulated here. But a better way of doing it is completely submerge the here and make sure that it is not exposed. When it is not exposed, that means there is a problem with the geosynthetic material. That is, if it is exposed to UV rays, then it becomes brittle after, after some time. So it is quite effective when it is submerged under water. And this is how it is also serving the purpose of winning the beach. But in our case, what is the problem? We have done similar kind of thing for Shankarpur, that is of West Bengal, wherein we had uh, all these sandbags, uh, all these uh, geotubes, uh, geo but you see what happens. So th this has sustained the uh, waves, but then the manhandling, so manhandling in the sense uh, uh, human intervention, they just to poke the geotube because it looks uh, really some funny. So they want to poke and then once it is poked and when you have some rain or something like that, the whole sand, whatever has uh, been. So we move on to artificial beach nourishment. That is in Pondicherry. So you say uh, along the east coast of India, so this is north, this is north and this is south. So this is north. So the sand is moving along the north and that is why you have uh, Chennai Harbour breakwaters and you have the Marina Beach. Same way, south of uh, Chennai, you have the Pondicherry Beach, Pondicherry Breakwater. And in fact, this was also done by IIT Madras. And once uh, this was erected, then 
we know that it's going to happen. This is going to happen. But this is no man's land. So no man's land, may not no man's land, it's not inhabited. So what happens is this beach is not serving any purpose. So what we can do is use this beach, nourish this, this area which was getting eroded. And this is what was done uh, sometime in early 2000s, I think, 2001, I think. So we um, uh, pumped some of this sand and there is an underwater tunnel here. And uh, through that tunnel, it was uh, bypass, I mean bypass. This bypassing was uh, excellent. It gave very fruitful results, as you can see here. This is to see how it, it served. And this was in early uh, 2002. And uh, then again here. But what is the problem here? It served. It helped. But the problem here is during the monsoon, you have the power cut. The motor fails. The pumping is not possible. Then what happens? The motor is designed for a particular capacity. So after the monsoon, the capacity, uh, I mean, the quantity to be handled increase, increases dramatically. And the pump is not able to cater to the uh, requirement. So that is how this uh, project was, uh, was stalled. But it was not. So when you look at uh, cheap materials, there are several cheap materials like coir bags, concrete block, blocks, uh, which is uh, uh, run through a, uh, a chain. And these are all used by CWPRS. I've done a lot of uh, work in this area. And uh, uh, we have not been involved in this kind of work. And so I'm just pro projecting all these things. Uh, recently, in Kerala, they have started using the uh, coconut fiber as a, a revetment for uh, this one. So this needs to be examined how it's going to serve. Now, next, uh, we are above, we have we are in the planning stage for a soft measure uh, near Bengal, I mean, uh, West Bengal. So Sagar Island is somewhere here. And we are planning to have the geotubes, as you can see here, and have a, a, a mattress here, geot container and mattress, have a proper tow protection here so that the scour can be avoided. And you have, we have gone in for a submerged breakwater, a submerged uh, reef, and uh, this is uh, still pending. We have submitted the report and we are waiting for that. Okay. So here, if you look at the soft measures, it's mixed. Uh, towards the future cost, sustainability of geosynthetic products, particularly the emerging type exposed to sunlight is the big question mark. And in fact, it's life. Wherever they have uh, done, uh, it, it remains to be seen because I, I have not come across uh, products which are lasting more than five to 10 years. Whereas uh, for this uh, uh, boulders, are remaining there intact. The only thing is you might have to do some kind of rehab, uh, periodic uh, rehabilitation. Ex execution and maintenance of the such project. So the products needs further investigation. It needs uh, uh, skilled labor, simple technology needed for b filling the, uh, the geotube. So this is very important because I had, been, I had an opportunity to visit, uh, uh, spend some time in Mexico. Uh, Mexico, the two geotubes which you saw is from Mexico. So it is almost like a child's play for them. They, in one day, they fill the tube, and uh, the next day, they, they lay the tube, everything is finished within one, one or two days maximum. But in our case, it uh, it is it doesn't happen the, that way. So the, the, this is one area which needs a lot of attention, uh, skilled labor and uh, technology then cheaper protection measures like its sustainability have to be as such. It will work because the principle is same. The basic physics is not uh, much of different. Only thing is it's sustainable. All these software measures, all the soft measures are bound to work. But its sustainability is the only question mark which we have to have in mind. Then plantation, it has uh, been proved to be very effective, particularly after the tsunami. I'm sure many of you would have seen the articles saying that uh, a lot of area which was uh, back, uh, I mean, uh, which has, uh, uh, the, which had the uh, uh, plantation, these plantations are ser serving as soldiers against the tsunami ingress. So that is the kind of experience we have. So a lot more need to be done in the plantation. So conclusions, if you look at, so hard and soft measures, I have uh, explained you our experience with hard and soft measures. Now aesthetic, it's not appealing. Yes, we have to 
accept that it is not accepting, but it is serving its purpose. It is appealing, but we don't have enough evidence that it is serving its purpose. Then, provided it is submerged, maybe it is working. Because one uh, typical example is, uh, uh, I had an experience in uh, uh, Cochin. CWPS has laid a uh, geotube, which is a submerged geotube. Technically, everything was good. But due to the whole uh, uh, weak soil, it has completely gone down. So it is not uh, serving its purpose of preventing the sediments from clogging the uh, approach to the Cochin port. So then uh, uh, restoration immediately effective. I need to just put some boulders. But here it is not once it is punctured, the YouTube is punctured. Although we had, in the case of uh, Shankarpur, we took all kinds of uh, uh, precautionary measures. We had a, a UV stabilizer, we had extra a sand, everything, but still it did not work. And capital uh, high, uh, cost maybe slightly higher for installing slurry pumps. Geosynthetic materials are expensive there. Here again, geosynthetic, there are mushroom of industries having geosynthetic materials. The quality of material needs a careful uh, assessment. The environmental impact, a huge, of course, this leaves a, uh, leaves a huge uh, print because when you talk about trapezoidal section, the base width is going to be high, uh, more, and it's going to lead, uh, leave a uh, larger footprint, whereas that footprint is completely much less compared to in the case of a soft measure. Implementation, very cheap, very spe speedy, easier, and uh, unskilled labor also is enough. Good, uh, Only good supervisor is needed, but mostly skilled, uh, unskilled labor is good enough. This is quite time-consuming, and uh, uh, it has to be very carefully done. The low water level, high water level, all those things have to be taken care of. And in case where there is a large tidal ranges, then you have other uh, problems. Then design criteria, you have a number of uh, solutions. I mean, manuals, shore protection manual, uh, and other things. Here, we do have one uh, book that was published by Pilaris, which uh, who also we had the opportunity of having uh, Pilaris with uh, our uh, geosynthetic workshop held in IIT Madras. And, uh, uh, he, we had uh, uh, a lot of knowledge shared between us, and uh, but still there are a lot, lot of things to be done under geosynthetic uh, division. The design life may be 30 to 100 years, this is my wild guess, uh, but then 30 years definitely on the minimum, definitely for sure, 100 years is a guess, and then uh, uh, it's not defined. In software, soft measure, it's not defined yet, uh, unless... Uh, uh, some of the experts sitting uh, uh, in the crowd may please clarify me if there are anything. So thanks for your kind attention and I look forward to your interaction. Thank you.